Housekeeping genes or proteins are things that are like constitutively and ubiquitously expressed. And they allow us to make sure we're comparing apples to apples when we're trying to measure how much of a gene is being like used or expressed under different conditions or in different cell types. They allow us to make sure that we're not just thinking that something is being made more when really we just loaded more of the sample. So here's how they work. Basically, every cell in your body, with the exception of some red blood cells and immune cells, has your genetic blueprint, so like your genome, the instructions for making everything your body would ever need in terms of like functional RNAs and proteins. And But your cells are going to make these things to different amounts because not all the cells are going to need the same thing. So your brain cells are going to need different things than your, like, your skin cells and things like this, and also under different conditions. So um, just like you wouldn't buy like a snow boots in the summer, or maybe you would because it would be on big sale, um, basically your cells don't need the same things all the time. And so you have, you control, your cells control the levels of these various things that are made. They control like the expression of those genes, um, how much they're being used. But, um, and so then we can measure the amounts of the differences in order to see like what the cells are up to. So we see that those sorts of genes are differentially expressed, but then there are also genes that your body needs like all the time. Um, things like like actin, which makes up your cytoskeleton. So basically the little like network of tubules inside of your, inside of your cells that gives them their structure and kind of acts to like transport things through, from one part of a cell to another. And so these sorts of things they need all the time. We call these housekeeping genes and they allow us to control between the levels of like the levels of the total sample we had so that we can compare between different samples um, without having to worry that we see a stronger signal because we just loaded more of the sample. When we talk about expression, we could be talking about transcription, so making the RNA copies or translation, so making the protein. And there are different techniques that we can use in order to detect changes in the amount of the expression, so either the transcription or the translation. When we're talking about um, the transcription, we're talking about the level of making the messenger RNA copies. And I should mention that in the case of proteins, there's often a very good correlation between the amounts of the messenger RNA and the amounts of the protein. So if you make a bunch of copies of the messenger RNA, well now there's more opportunities for the ribosomes, so the protein making machinery, to get to work making the protein. And so you see more messenger RNA, more protein. But there's also, you can have regulation of the level of the messenger RNA and of the protein um, that can influence the exact correlation. But one of the ways we can test to see how much a gene is like being used, that is being expressed, is by measuring the amounts of messenger RNA copies. And we can do this with techniques like qPCR, um, which basically quantitative PCR, um, and we, it's more specifically we use qRT-PCR, so reverse transcription PCR, where basically we make a DNA copy of that RNA, and then we use um, PCR in order to make lots of copies of that. So much more on how it works in other posts, but basically you're making copies of the amounts of messenger RNA copies that are present. And the more copies there are, the more we say the gene is being like expressed. Similarly, we can use a technique called a Western blot in order to detect how much of a very specific protein there are. There is. In this case, we take all the proteins, we separate them by size using SDS page typically. Um, and so basically we run these protein, we unfold these proteins and we send them traveling through a gel. The bigger proteins get tangled up more in the mesh and so they don't travel as far. Um, when we turn off the power, which was, we, we had been using an electricity gradient, um, electricity for field to pull them through the gel, um, but, but now we stop it and so they're higher up in the gel. And then what we can do is we can use antibodies, so these little proteins that recognize specific things. We use antibodies that are specific for the protein that we want to see how much it was being used, and therefore we can see how many copies of it there are. Well, not how many copies, but we can get an idea of the relative expression. So we can see relative expression of the genes in the protein, but relative to what? So the amount of sample you start with is going to dictate how much you have in there, not only the amount of difference between different cellular conditions. So often what we're doing is we're trying to compare between conditions. We're trying to say, okay, in the absence of this drug, how much of this protein is there? Or at this time point, how much of this protein is there? Versus at this time point, how, many, how much of this protein is there? Versus with and without the drug. So we're trying to compare different conditions. Now, 
if we say take a lot more of a sample from one thing than we have in another, we're going to see a lot more of that protein or of that um, mRNA, even if there's not necessarily more of it per unit area. So it's not being like expressed more, you just loaded more of your sample. So we need a way to be able to control for this. And this is where the housekeeping genes come in. So these are things that are going to be expressed basically the same in all the cell types. Because of this, you would expect that the level of this the strength of the band for say that protein or the level of the qpcr like the number of cycles it takes to reach a threshold um so basically you count how many cycles it takes to get past a certain threshold because you're measuring the copies that are made and the more copies you start with the faster you'll rise to that so the fewer cycles you'll need and so basically what would happen is that if you had a lot of something you would have fewer cycles but you could have a lot of it because you had more of the sample or because there was more of the the thing present but with the house with most genes you wouldn't know because most genes are going to be um the genes that we're measuring typically we're trying to the reason why we're measuring is um, is because they're differentially expressed in different cells but then there are things um in order to actually like make sure that we loaded the same amount what we can do is we can normalize it to something that's expressed equally in all the different cell types and this is where the housekeeping genes come in because we would expect the band or we would expect that that cycle threshold to be the same for all the cell types, we can then just divide by the signal from that in order to normalize. So basically make it so that we don't have to worry about how much sample was added, although we try to add the same amount. Um, we can now kind of normalize in case the, the amounts were kind of different so that we're, we're doing equal comparisons. We're comparing apples to apples. We're comparing like equal cells to amounts to equal cell amounts. And that way we can then look for differences between those different cells or between those different conditions rather than be looking and just be seeing differences in how much you loaded. So it's not quite as simple as just dividing by the signal for your housekeeping gene or protein. So in the case of a Western plot, for example, you need to calculate what's called the lane normalization factor for each lane and then divide the signal by that rather than dividing it just by the signal for that individual lane. So let me explain. Basically, what you want to do is you take that gel, you take the like the scan gel, and you measure the intensity of each of the different bands, so with the strength of the signal. Find the lane on the gel or on your membrane that has the highest amount of signal for the housekeeping protein, and now for each of the different lanes, divide the, sig divide the signal for that lane's housekeeping protein by the highest one, and this will give you what's called the LNF or the lane normalization factor. So for the lane with the highest amount of the housekeeping protein, this will be one. For the others, it will be less than one. Now take the signal for the protein of interest for each lane and divide it by that lane's lane normalization factor. And this will allow you to compare between all of the different lanes um, with this normalized factor. So as we mentioned, like the most common housekeeping proteins we typically use for like a Western blot would be GAP-DH, beta-tubulin, and beta-actin. And so GAP-DH, if you're wondering, that's um, glyceraldehyde, phosphate, dehydrogenase. And so it's a metabolic enzyme involved in glycolysis, so like breaking down sugar. Um, beta-tubulin and beta-actin, those help make up those like cytoskeleton and the structure of the cell and move things around. And so these are things that your cells are gonna need all the time. So your cells are making them all the time, but are they really making the same levels in all the cells? Maybe not. And so this paper that I'll link to, basically they went and they looked through data from the cell, the protein expression of different genes in different cell types and that sort of thing. And they found that the ones we commonly use aren't that great. Um, they have more variability than we've traditionally thought. Um, and they suggest some ones that they say are better. Um, and so I will link to this paper so you can check it out yourself um, if you would like to. Another problem with housekeeping genes is that sometimes they're expressed a lot more than the thing that you're interested in. And so in order to have enough signal of the thing that you're interested in, you need to load a lot of sample. And this can oversaturate. Um, basically, you reach past the linear range of detection for your housekeeping protein. So basically, you want your housekeeping thing to be in a linear range so that you're not like off the scale, so that you can't tell if they're if you're above the if you're like saturated, like there's 
you can't have, no matter if you add more of that protein, you're still gonna get the same signal. So now you can't really tell if you have more of the thing or not because you're above the signal. And so this can be a problem if you have a lowly expressed thing, so you have to have a ton of sample. Um, so there are things that you can do in order to make sure that you have a normalization protein that's in the linear range, um, and you might have to choose your normalization protein this way and things like this. Basically, there are different things that can go wrong with normalization proteins and they're not perfect and this sort of thing. And so uh, increasingly common is to actually normalize, that, normalize to total protein letter levels. Um, so basically divide by um, the normalized amount of total protein instead of a reference protein. Um, the problem with this is that basically the techniques that we typically use to measure total protein on the gel um, would interfere with the actual blotting process, but there are reversible types of stains, things like Ponceau, um, as well as now there are like stain-free technologies where basically before uh, you um, even transfer your gel, you can measure the amount of protein in the gel because there's like this fluorescent stuff in the gel that binds to the proteins and then it's gonna let you, um, let you visualize the proteins um, and how much protein there is. After you transfer, you can still measure it. So that's total protein normalization, or TPN. So there are different ways that you can use in order to probe for multiple things on your membrane, such as your protein of interest and your reference protein. And I did a whole post on this a while back that I'll link to, but basically the best thing that you can do if you can do it is to multiplex. So to probe for both of them at the same time, this is often doable in the case of your reference proteins because you can typically buy these reference proteins, buy them, um, buy the antibodies for them, like primary antibodies that are already conjugated, so are already attached to something fluorescent or something detectable. Um, and you can buy a bunch of different versions of them so you don't have to worry about anything with cross-reactivity between your antibodies um, and like if they're raised in the same species and that sort of thing. Then you can, if that's not an option for you, what you can do is you can actually strip and reprobe. So probe for one thing, strip the probe off, and then probe for the second thing. Or if the bands are far enough apart in size, you can cut the membrane in between them and probe each of them separately. One last one to introduce, basal. Um, so this is kind of like your baseline activity or your baseline expression. Um, and so when we're talking about the basal expression, we're talking about basically we're not doing anything to activate the transcription. We're not doing anything to repress the transcription. So we're not like messing with just kind of like the cells normal going about its business. Um, and so the basal expression is just kind of like this baseline expression. And in the case of the housekeeping genes, we would want that baseline expression to be very similar between all these different cell types and under all these different conditions, rather than having it so that your expression is going to be wildly different from that like basal expression or rather having it that your basal expression in these different cell types is different. Um, so with the housekeeping genes, what you want is really just like this total consistency. Unfortunately, as we saw, this isn't always what you get, um, but that's like the ultimate ideal and that's what you're relying on when you're using these housekeeping genes as your sort of references. That is what we mean by like housekeeping genes and stuff. And so remember this would be things like GAPDH or actin. Um, basically you run it, you test for it in the same sample that you're testing for what other things you're looking for. And this way you're able to do a direct comparison between your samples by normalizing for the amount of the thing, like amount of the total content that you added. So heads up, hands down, High five for um, housekeeping jeans and speaking of housekeeping, I've got to go like clean my room.